Oh, hi amazing Caleb fans. I'm Mrs. Martin, the teacher of GoAnimate School Academy. And I'm Mrs. Clementine, the principal of GoAnimate School Academy. And with his version of us, we seemed like very nice people and doesn't support child abuse like Harry Strack, Paper Luigi 99 or Roku Kun, who makes these such horrible videos out of our students. And as you may know, this version of me is not crazy, greedy, psychopath, or all of that stuff. And also, as you may know, it's almost time for the last day of school, and the beginning of summer break. While the remake of Dora and her family moves out of Ghost City is still work in progress, and the script for Stephanie and Clyde moves out of Ghost City was just the beginning, I think it's time to bring you to our learning educational video for the first time in GoAnimate and Beyond History. Tell them Mrs. Clementine. We're going to bring you to History and Social Studies class. If you're a history teacher or social studies teacher, then you might want to show this video to your fellow students and classmates. But if you're not a history teacher or a social studies teacher, well that's okay. You can still watch it and feed knowledge to your brain. Enjoy the show and have fun learning everyone. Hello and good morning class. I'm your history and social studies teacher, Mrs. Lucy. And I'm from London, England, a place where Harry Potter, Alice, Wendy, Peter Pan, Evelyn O'Connell, Mick O'Connell, Jonathan Carnahan, the rest of all students of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and everyone in London lived here. Thanks to Roku Khan's stepmothers from Indonesia and Malaysia, they have managed to repair the damages and fix the school with the power of GoAnimate logic. But anyways, let's start our class. Now, if you could please bring out your notebooks, textbooks, pencils, pens and any other object that can help us learn today's Polynesian history lesson. Perfect. Class is now in session. Today, we are going to learn about the differences between the Maori Haka chant, and the Tahitian Haka chant. But first, let me turn on my computer and my projector on before we begin. Okay, now let's get started. The Maori culture has a long history in New Zealand, with the first settlers arriving in the 13th century. The Maori language, Te Rio Maori, is central to the culture and is considered one of the most prominent languages in the country. The Maori tribe is known for its rich and diverse cultural practices, including haka, kapa haka, and the use of the taiha, a traditional weapon used for warfare and ceremonial occasions. The Maori tribe also places a strong emphasis on spirituality and the connection to the environment through the concept of mana. Similarly, the Tahitian tribe in French Polynesia also has a well-established culture and language. The Tahitian language, Te Rio Tahiti, is a Polynesian language that has been spoken in Tahiti for many generations. The Tahitian tribe has its own unique cultural practices, including dance, music, and traditional clothing such as the Pura. The Tahitian tribe also holds its own unique values and traditions that have been passed down through the generations. Both the Maori and Tahitian tribes have rich and unique cultures, and their respective languages, T. Rio Maori and T. Rio Tahiti, are integral parts of their cultures. These languages not only serve as a means of communication, but also serve as a way to pass down cultural traditions and values to future generations. Overall, both the Maori and Tahitian tribes are fascinating cultures that have preserved their unique traditions and languages for many generations. French Polynesia is a collection of islands in the South Pacific Ocean, and two of its islands, Nukuhiva and the Marxas Islands, are worth examining in detail. Both islands have their own unique geographic features, but they also share some similarities that make them fascinating to learn about. In this history lesson, we will explore the key differences between Nukuhiva and the Marxas Islands, while also discussing some similarities and highlighting some of the most notable features of each island. Geographically, Nukuhiva is located in the eastern side of the Marxas Islands, and it is the largest island in the group. 
Nuku Heva's highest point is Mont Puamo, which reaches an elevation of over 1500 meters above sea level. The island's landscape is marked by steep cliffs and rugged terrain, with many streams and waterfalls tumbling down the mountain sides. The island is also known for its numerous caves, which have been formed over centuries due to the erosion of lava flows. Nukuhiva is home to several villages, the largest of which is Taiohai, which serves as the administrative center. The island's main industries are tourism, agriculture, and fishing, and its cultural heritage includes the creation of traditional tattoos and the performance of the haka, a type of dance that is performed for various occasions. The Marx's Islands are a group of four islands, including Nukuhiva, Hivua, Fatuhiva, and Tawata. Geographically, the islands are known for their rugged cliffs and volcanoes, with the highest point being Montepaua on Hivua, which reaches an elevation of over 1200 meters above sea level. The islands are also known for their natural beauty, with pristine beaches and clear water. In addition to their natural beauty, the islands also have a rich cultural heritage, which is reflected in the traditional tattoos, crafts, and dances. The islands are also known for their unique fauna and flora, with many species being endemic to the region. Both Nukuhiva and the Marx's islands are known for their rich cultural heritage and unique characteristics, making them popular destinations for tourists and travelers alike. While these islands are certainly worth visiting for their natural beauty, it is also worth noting that they have a rich history and culture that is worth examining in greater detail. And now, we are ready to learn the differences between the Haka Maori chant, and the Tahitian Haka chant. And for that, let us all explore the differences between the Maori and Tahitian Haka chants, while also discussing the similarities between the two. Both are traditional dances that are used to express emotional states, such as passion, aggression, excitement, and unity, and are accompanied by song. The most obvious difference between the two dances is that while the Maori haka is a passionate, explosive, and physically demanding dance that often involves a whole group of people performing in synchrony, the Tahitian haka is a more measured and restrained dance that often involves only singular performers, accompanied by a drumming rhythm. The Maori haka has a long and rich history going back centuries, in which it was often performed by warriors before battle to intimidate their opponents and boost the morale of their own troops. The dance often incorporates powerful movements such as stamping, slapping of the chest or thighs, and facial expressions meant to convey aggression, and the chants are often designed to be intimidating and aggressive. In modern times, the haka has come to be performed during sporting events, especially by the All Blacks, New Zealand's national rugby team, often before a game begins. It is also often performed during weddings, funerals, or other important cultural events, and is now recognized as a cultural icon of New Zealand. On the other hand, the Tahitian haka is a more subdued dance that is often performed by individuals or small groups, rather than by large groups as in the case of the Maori haka. The Tahitian haka is performed to a drumming rhythm, which sets a specific tempo and adds to the overall atmosphere of the dance. The movements of the Tahitian haka are more subtle and restrained than those of the Maori haka, and the chants that accompany the dance are often focused on expressing love, gratitude, or unity, rather than aggressive expressions of emotion. The Tahitian haka is also highly regarded as a cultural icon of Tahiti, and is often performed for tourists and visitors to the island. In summary, while the Maori and Tahitian haka chants share some similarities in their use of dance and song to express emotional states, they also have some important differences in their execution and function. The Maori haka is a fierce and energetic dance performed by groups of people to convey aggression and morale, while the Tahitian haka is a more restrained and subtle dance performed by individuals or small groups to express love, gratitude, and unity. The Tahitian haka, like the Maori haka, is a traditional dance and chant that involves the entire body in vigorous rhythmic movements, including swaying, slapping of the chest and thighs, stamping, and gestures of stylized violence. The haka is accompanied by a chant and is performed as a way to honor ancestors, challenge opponents, or express emotion. 
However, unlike the Maori haka, the facial expressions accompanying the Tahitian haka are less threatening. The Tahitian haka is characterized by a graceful and expressive dance style, often accompanied by the sound of drums. The dancers may also wear traditional clothing and accessories, which add to the artistry and drama of the performance. In both cultures, the haka holds a significant cultural and historical importance, and it is performed in a variety of social contexts, including ceremonies, festivals, and athletic competitions. It serves as an expression of the people's cultural heritage and history, and it is a powerful symbol of their sense of identity and belonging. It is important to note that, despite the similarities between the Maori and Tahitian haka chants, each culture has its own unique traditions and expressions, which reflect the rich cultural diversity of the world. By learning about and appreciating these different cultural traditions, we can gain a deeper understanding of the complex and multi-layered nature of human identity and culture. Both the Maori haka and the Tahitian haka are traditional dances and chants that incorporate chanting in rhythm. The haka is a highly choreographed and expressive dance that is performed by a group of men, typically as a show of physical prowess or to intimidate an opponent. The haka chant typically consists of a series of short, rhythmic phrases, repeated and accompanied by a variety of physical movements, including slapping of the chest and thighs, stomping of the feet, and hand gestures. The chant is usually in a single key under stable rhythm, which serves as a backbone for the performance, while also contributing to the intense energy and emotion of the haka. One of the key features of the haka is the intensity of the chanting, which is often described as a growling or rumbling sound, accompanied by intense facial expressions, hand gestures, and other physical movements. This combination of chanting and physical movements creates a unique experience for both the performers and the audience, and makes the haka chant a highly memorable and powerful cultural tradition. Another interesting aspect of the haka is the fact that it is often used in ceremonies to honor ancestors or to celebrate significant events, such as weddings or funerals. In these contexts, the haka takes on a more ceremonial role and is often performed by a group of men, accompanied by musical instruments and other traditional elements. Overall, the haka is a complex and multifaceted cultural tradition that is deeply rooted in Maori and Tahitian history and culture. Its combination of chanting, physical movements, and cultural significance make it a unique and memorable experience for performers and audiences alike, and it serves as a powerful reminder of the rich cultural traditions that have been passed down from generation to generation. Oh my goodness! The bell rings. Well, class dismissed. In another time, we'll discuss one of the most famous Tahitian Haka chants one of all. La danse du cochon. Which means the pig dance in French. And no, they don't make pig noises, they make guttural chanting sounds. It sounded like gorillas. No offense to the Tahitians. It's kind of creepy. I think it's pretty neat. Anyway, class dismissed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and comments please. In the next episode, we will get to learn about what the pig dance, the Tahitian special harper is all about. And like I said earlier, they don't make pig noises. It's too bad that some of these videos don't get many likes or views on YouTube. Next time on the amazing Caleb's Go Animate Tunes, the history of La Dance du Capon, the special Tahitian harper guttural chant. Until then, this is Lucy, signing off.